Yes, yes I'm looking at uh, the students' enrollment figures from okay. 2001 till 2013, uh, when different school fees from 250 naira to 25,000 naira to this new one. And uh, the enrollment, from what we understand, and uh, as you also subscribe to this, uh, 2013 to 14. Now you have about 1,119 students, and you used to have uh, 3,611 in uh, Faculty of Arts alone. Uh, once upon a time, but now the total figure is declining. So ASU also says, as a result of these school fees, student enrollment is nose diving. Thank you, sir. I'm an insider. I've seen the figures. Number one, the issue of enrollment is multifactorial. We cannot just pick the issue of school fees in isolation. Let us, just for the sake of argument, agree that school fees probably has a role. But when I joined LASSO, there were 70 programs that were deaccredited. And we had to go through the process of accreditation in 2012. And we got 16 courses, 16 programs accredited. If your program is not accredited, you cannot advertise for it. And if you cannot advertise for it, you cannot take in students. And you're talking about programs where you will naturally have a large population of students. Business management, accounting, even law, economics, business admin, um, international um, public administration. These are various programs that we had to, first of all, go back to seek accreditation and then advertise following the approval by the NUC. That's one thing. Another issue that is very important that we need to bear in mind is this. The average parent will not send a child to a university where half of the time they are closed down. Either because the students are on strike or the lecturers are on strike. And this is where the branding of the institution comes into play. So it's not just the issue of school fees. Now, having said that again, when you look across, even before the increase in school fees and after, after the increase, mm -hmm. application into certain programs did not really change much, significantly. In terms of the figures? In terms, the, in terms of the statistical analysis, okay. uh, the, the significance level, the figures are, are obviously different. Now, you find that a number of programs are even oversubscribed. Like the last post UTM we did, we have, of course, only 80 slots for medicine. And 470 people came to see the exams. And you will see the same trend in computer science, in engineering, in uh, some of the sciences, in economics, in business admin. You will see that kind of trend. There are some programs that even the students themselves are not even keen to apply for. Prof, I, I don't quite get the point here. Uh, are you saying that you, you were not on the, or you, the student, the drop in student enrollment didn't quite bother you? No, I don't say that. The, I was only trying to explain the drop in enrollment. That is not just an issue of school fees. There is a problem of accreditation, which we had to deal with. And thank God we've been able to deal with that. OK. But from uh, the figures I see here, yeah. uh, it says the 2001-2002 session, you had a grand total of student enrollment, which stood at 4,216. Then in 2004-2005, you had a grand total of uh, students enrollment of 4,570. And then I just flipped right through to 2010, no, 9-10 session, you had 3,710. 2010-2011 session, you had 3,052. 
and that was when they were paying 25,000 Naira school fees. But in 2011, 2012, you had a grand total of student enrollment of 2,133. And then in 2012 and 13, we had 2013. So at that time, where they, uh, they had the accreditation challenge, while the school fees were low, the enrollment was really hovering between 4,000 and 3,000. But now that the school fees is high, it's about 2,000. The problem of accreditation occurred around 2010, 2009 and 2010. That was when the loss of accreditation took place. And I came in, this administration came into place just at the end of that period, and we had to do something about accreditation. When you talk about accreditation, are you talking about the one from the NUC? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Now, there's something we need to bear in mind. There's a difference between saying, oh, you have 3,000 students or 4,000 students. You want to consider the fact, do we actually have the infrastructure setting to back it up? I'll give you an example. One day I was walking along the university and I saw this stream of students coming across. It was like um, a group of ants just walking past. And I had to trace the origin. I traced it to a particular lecture room and I was told that these people just finished a lecture. You're talking about about 400 people. Where were they coming out from? A lecture room that will not, if I want to exaggerate, will not accommodate more than 200. So where were the rest? And that's why it's no surprise today that we are witnessing a, uh, a high level of infrastructural development in Lasso you know, to accommodate all these people. Let me look at all of this now yeah. because uh, we have two uh, big issues on your plate. Uh, the Academic Staff Union means even if the students decide to go back, they may not be teachers for now, and even if the teachers go back, they just might not be students for them to teach. How have you been able to manage the school till this day? Because for what Achika Trita did say, you must have some kind of subvention or an impress. Do you also generate funds for the university? Uh, we generate funds from the university. Of course, most of our internet generated revenue come from the school fees itself. And that's what we use in part to augment our subvention to pay salaries. Uh, I believe that within the next couple of days, the issue of fees would have been finally resolved. And I expect the students to come back. And uh, when it gets to the point that you raised about ASO, I must say that we've been constantly engaging ourselves. Not just that, um, there's been a constant engagement even with the, at the level of the Chancellor, at the level of the Governing Council. Uh, we've had meetings at the Secretariat uh, with the committees set up by the State Executive Council. And um, we've signed communique, we've reached a lot of agreement. We started with about 20 points, that is ASU last raising 20 points. By the time the national ASU came to talk to us, the points had been reduced to seven. We had a specific agreements, and by the time the industrial dispute was going to be declared, there were three points. School fees, the issue of promotion, and then the issue of uh, retirement age and the, the tenure of principal officers. Okay. Retirement age, tenure of principal officers are not issues that can be said to be resident within the university. The issue of promotion, it is not true that there are no vacancies. This thing about no vacancies of promotion was actually coined by the, uh, by, by, the by ASU. But having said that, it's, it's also a fact that even this uh, 2012 2013 session, there were 256 vacancies. The various faculties and the college put up 
105 people for promotion. At the end of that exercise, conducted by the Appointment and Promotion Committee of the University, over 62% scaled through. So why would you say that there are no vacancies? Um, the issue of school fees is something that is supposed to be entirely within the purview of the students, the, the parents, and the government. And that has been sorted out. 